US. Um, we will welcome um, Ravi uh, Vaidyanathan. I hope I pronounced your last name. I always <laughs> try and fail. Um, Ravi will have a very nice uh, continuation uh, to the um, to the talk um, that Bettina just uh, just finished. Ravi is a senior product manager for cardiac um, portfolio in Fujifilm Cellular Dynamics. And what he will show is a little bit of twist uh, to the talk that um, Bettina had, and he will talk about the effect of the fibroblast co-culture on the contractility of iPSC-derived cardiomyocytes. Thank you so much, Ravi, to, for, that you woke up uh, so early to join us. Um, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I hope everyone could hear me. Thank you, Elena, for that introduction, and you did say my last name correctly. Thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> so today I'll, I'll briefly talk about uh, what we are doing. Um, it's more of an update from last time, what we have presented. Um, to give you, oh, sorry, that was two slides. Okay, so um, to give you a brief overview of the cardiovascular portfolio, um, uh, what we have in our portfolio is isolated cardiomyocytes, which we have mainly in apparently healthy normal lines. Uh, we have two donors. And Adam, to answer some of your questions too, we have disease models in our portfolio. We have a DCM line that is available, also has an isogenic control that you can use for your studies. We also have engineered lines where we have engineered uh, at least two different uh, disease models. One is uh, Brugara syndrome, and the second one is uh, uh, arrhythmogenic right ventricular uh, cardiomyopathy. <clears throat> then we have the cardiomyocyte squared, which is what most of the data that you saw from Bettina came from. We also have endothelial cells, and we have recently been working on cell cardiac fibroblast uh, in this is what I'm going to mainly focus on uh, going forward, and I'll give you a story on how that works. In addition to our cardiomyocytes, endothelial cells, and fibroblasts, we also have media. We have our serum-containing media <clears throat> that um, we have a plating medium and also a maintenance medium, and our cells really like these and have been used, and these medias have been used uh, for a lot of the studies that you are currently that were currently shown. We recently also launched the serum free media, <clears throat> which is the iCell cardiotox assay medium, um, which is albumin free, and iCell cardiotox serum free medium, which is serum free. So, our cells are best known for <clears throat> working in 2D assays, and we are platform agnostic. We work with a variety of uh, instrument providers. I have listed a few of them here. Um, oh, one of our major collaborators is Nani. So, as you saw, you know, we took a really nice presentation on uh, some of the work that they've done with ourselves on the robustness and lot to lot variability. But in addition to that, we also have a protocol, <clears throat> uh, an application note for a lot of the instruments. Uh, the one thing that I wanted to point out is that uh, all of these instruments. <clears throat> uh, were uh, used as part of the SIPA2 at some point. And uh, we were part of the original study. And if you remember, there were 10 sites that did a, did a lot of work trying to validate uh, the protocols, the cells, and, and we have been from part of it right from the beginning. So um, there are also strategies to improve the functional maturity of iPSC-derived cardiomyocytes. And some of the things that most people want to do and they like to do it is to make cells uh, look like adult cardiomyocytes. And some of the things they've been trying to do is to have a different culture medium, supplements, extracellular matrix uh, surfaces, um, to modify the surfaces such as you know, um, ECMs and, and also with patterning. Then there are devices uh, that can do some of these improvements too. I'm going to mostly focus on the 3D and the co-culture aspect of it. 
So this is a study from AstraZeneca that came out in 2018 where they put uh, cardiospheres together. <clears throat> and what they did is they combined uh, our cardiomyocytes, I said cardiomyocytes with primary human cardiac fibroblast and primary human cardiac microvascular endothelial cells. And when they combined them and looked for specific markers <clears throat> of maturity, such as Vementin and cardiac troponin I, um, across day 14 and day 21, they saw that the cardiac troponin I was robustly expressing and the Vementin was primarily expressed in the, uh, in the fibroblast. Um, they also saw matrix with collagen 1, which is shown on the left over here. They, in the study, they actually compared 15 drugs um, that were known to have structural um, uh, toxicity. And uh, two of the drugs are shown here, doxorobicin and sedative. And if you compare that to control, you can clearly see that the troponin I and vimentin levels are lower as compared to control. The one thing that they found from this really nice study was that the sensitivity was similar at about 73%, but the specificity was higher in the cardiac uh, uh, micro tissue, which is shown in black over here, compared to monolayer of cardiomyocytes. The study mainly focused on structural, not on function. So they looked at ER integrity and um, mitochondrial membrane uh, potential. And, and I think the gist of this was that there is some maturity that you see when you combine these three cell types together. So what we did, and this was presented at last time, is to combine three different cell types. We used our ICEL cardiomyocytes, our ICEL endothelial cells, and used a primary uh, fibroblast. And when you combine them in the ratios mentioned here and then feed them with a combination of our medium and the promo cell endothelial supplement, we saw that um, there were quite a few benefits. But when we evaluated the market, uh, customers were complaining that the cells, uh, the fibroblasts mainly, were very variable from lot to lot. The, um, the expected results were not very consistent, and the cells were being very, very proliferative, and they would take over the culture over time. So what we decided was that it would be nice to have our own iPSC-derived fibroblast. So that's what we did. And here I'm showing you some data showing uh, the purity and identity, identity of our uh, cardiac, uh, ICEL cardiac fibroblast. Uh, we looked at the purity. They were very high pure when we measured them right out of the thaw. And they were also alpha SMA negative, which means they are not activated. They express all the right markers. We are showing here collagen, uh, priostin, and also connection 43. These are all key fibroblast mark, cardiac fibroblast markers that our cells seem to express. So then what we did is we combined these three cell types into ours. So now you have an isogenic culture of ICEL cardiomyocyte squared, ICEL cardiac fibroblast, and ICEL endothelial cells, all from the same background. And when you combine them right out of thaw, they found these really nice uh, spheres when you combine them in these three ratios, and we'll be providing the media for this. Uh, you have a weekend free workflow. You do a 50% media change uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's what is shown here. And in two weeks, they are ready for assay. Um, these are some of the preliminary experiments that we did with the cardiospheres. Um, on the left is an intact cardiosphere uh, stained with uh, looking for fibrotic in a necrotic core. And as you can see from the staining, that is, uh, the cells are really nice and variable from the trichome straining. Um, the 10,000 total cell uh, cardiac cardiospheres had really nice uniform shape and they were between 300 and 400 microns. And on the right-hand side, what I'm showing you is a 384 well plate where on the edges we plated uh, 5,000 total cells, uh, combining three cell types that I just talked about, and in the middle, 10,000 total cells. And as you can see, they form really nice uniform spheres to look within the same window. So these cardiospheres can be also amenable to high throughput assays. 
one of the key aspects that we were looking for is a positive iotropic effect with our cells. So here, um, I'm showing what we've done on day 14 with uh, the cardiospheres that we generated. Uh, yellow is the control, red is under the drug condition. And as you can see in isopaternal, uh, and WDVN, these are two positive ion tropes. You can see that compared to the yellow, the red, which also is faster, but also has a bigger calcium amplitude. And that is the same thing that we saw with dobutamine. And results from multiple experiments are shown on the right where you can clearly see that that is uh, at least a 1.5 fold increase in, uh, uh, in the amplitude of the calcium transient compared to control. Um, this is some immunostaining that we had done um, with our collaborative molecular devices, panel A and B. The red is cardiomyocytes, green uh, in, the, in panel A is cardiac fibroblast, um, B is uh, green is endothelial cells, and blue is nuclei. On the right, the colors are being switched. So red is cardiomyocytes, green, uh, sorry, red is cardiac fibroblast, and green is cardiomyocytes. And, um, I think what this comes out is that these three cells really seem to integrate really nice. They're nicely spread out and they're forming these nice spheres. Now, how do you use this in, in, in any of the platforms that Manian provides? So in 2020, uh, AstraZeneca, again, published a paper where they assembled these cardiospheres, again, using our cardiomyocytes, um, and endothelial cells, and but what they did is they added these gold ion particles into the culture, and using a custom array of magnets, they were able to um, focus or bring those cardiac steroids that were formed right onto the uh, cardiac site electrode, and their success rate was really high. So this is where you can see when. Um, this is cardiomyocytes only, cardiac myocytes and cardiac fibroblasts with endothelial cells. When you combine them, they form these nice spheroids and they've characterized some of that here. And this is showing that they're really nice and round with a red stain. Um, they also are pointing in panel T to the, uh, the gold ion particles showing that they are nicely incorporated and because of this custom array of magnets, they could uh, focus them on the electrodes, and if, if you read the paper, you'll also see that they are very high success rate. One of the things that they did is the positive iotropic experiment that I just talked about. They added 100 nanomolar isopaternal, and control is in black, and isopaternal increased the amplitude significantly, as you can show, as you can see here. Uh, on the right-hand side, what they did is they normalized the amplitude, but one of the other things that also happens when you add such positive anotropes, it not only increases the amplitude, but it also decreases the duration of contraction because it's now beating faster. So with that, they were able to show that you can do this. Now, they used a lot of um, custom-made instruments. Since then, uh, Cranier has now this magnetic tools for 3D cell culturing. Then they also have the nano shuttle, which has the beads that can be incorporated uh, into this uh, cardiospheres now. They have magnetic plates that comes in 624, 4896, and 384 well plates, so it's amenable to high throughput too. The other thing that you would probably need is to move these spheroids around. So they have these mag pens now that can be used to move one at a time, or you can move many of them at the same time. So this is how well, we think that now with these tools available, you should be able to use these cardiospheroids directly on the cardio excite plates um, um, and then repeat these experiments. I'm not going to go over the slide because Bettina did a really good job talking about the various um, aspects of the Flexite system and the nice video that she had that I didn't have access to, but it's shown right here. But um, some of the work that we are doing right now is uh, to see, as I said at the beginning of the talk, to see how these cardiomyocytes and cardiac fibroblast co-culture work. Uh, this is the workflow that we currently have uh, where you plate our cells on the flexite plate, uh, maintain them for 
one to 10 days, you can dose them at five to nine days and then start recording uh, for acute experiments within 20 minutes. Um, I'm gonna skip over this too because Bettina did a really good job showing you guys how these compounds work, but basically the compounds have the right response on these plates. Um, this is all the plates also measure true contractility. So that is where I think there is a lot of interest in these plates, at least from our end, we feel that the, the physiological uh, stress that the cells see in, as compared to plastic or glass is more relevant. And that is where we are evaluating this in-house too. Um, this is a very interesting experiment where um, Matthias and uh, group were able to cul culture the cells for up to 44 days. And as you can see, some of the maturity markers, um, which is decrease in beat rate and increase in amplitude were all seen in, in, in our cells when they were cultured for really long duration, even though the experiments can be started as early as day six, day seven. So this is the data that um, I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, one of the things that we realize is that it is not easy uh, to take an existing protocol that I just talked about and just add something um, to, to see the results. This is something that we're realizing and I'm sure most of you realize. So there is a lot of optimization that needs to be done. And, and we are at the beginning stages here where we compared no cardiac fibroblasts to, to we adding 10,000 cardiac fibroblasts to 15,000 cardiac fibroblasts to different concentrations of cardiomyocytes squared. And, and we are still working on the optimization, but um, some of the things that we are seeing early on is that when you combine these two cells, you uh, start seeing an increased amplitude on day four and decreased beat rate. Uh, we would like to take these cultures longer, but we haven't had enough time to look into details of this. And I'm hoping that if I'm given this opportunity to present again next year, we will see more details and probably an application protocol on how to use these cardiac fibroblasts in 2D with our cells to see some of the benefits um, of co-culture and 3D modeling uh, that might be relevant. So basically what I've shown you today is that combining ICEL cardiomyocytes, ICEL endothelial cells, and ICEL cardiac fibroblasts directly from TAR can generate 3D triculture cardiac microtissue efficiently. Uh, these microtissues are, are demonstrate spontaneous beating and have a robust calcium signal. These Microtissues also show positive iotropic effects, suggesting that uh, isyl cardiomyocytes are further maturing in the 3D environment. Um, the other thing was that these isyl cardiac spheres can be used on the cardio excite system using the magnetic options that are available right now. And then finally, we are working on optimizing the co culture of isyl cardiomyocytes and isyl cardiac fibroblasts on the flex side, and we're hoping that we'll have something available uh, soon. So thank you, and I can take any questions. Thank you very much, Ravi. It's a lot of new things that you have there in development. Thank you for showing them to us. Um, do we have any questions? Okay, from Stephen, the first one. Um, hi, Ravi, nice talk. Um, for the cardiospheres, do you have a sense of the relative transducibility of these uh, spheres in potential to evaluating the downstream effects of AAV gene therapies? Um, so we are actually looking into that right now. Um, we have already collected some data that actually I presented at ASGCT on 2D. We haven't done it in 3D yet. Um, but um, we are looking into it and we expect that it should be possible because you're using them right out of thaw in suspension. Um, you should be able to infect them right at the beginning when you thaw them um, in suspension that most people do. So yes, it's, it's possible. Um, that's the best answer I have. I don't have any data, but I can, I'm happy to share the 2D data that we have with our cardiomyocytes and all the AVs uh, we've looked at all the way from one to 10 um, with uh, ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I have one from one of the private uh, channels. 
Um, do you, the, the cells that you have perf um, measured, they are um, atrial or ventricular cardiomyocytes, or do you see any difference when you mix them with fibroblasts? So, um, isal cardiomyocytes is a mixture of three cell types for the most part. Uh, um, it has, a uh, majority of them is ventricular origin. I would say anywhere from 50 to 70% is ventricular. We do have some about 20% atrial and, and then a few nodal cells. That is what gives them the automaticity that most people are uh, dependent on to do their assays right now. Um, so, as of now, we, we, we don't have an answer on if there is any differences. Uh, but what our model brings to the plate is a whole heart. Basically, you have in a dish rather than specific ventricular or atrial cardiomyocytes. But this is where it gets challenging when you have very more... So ventricular cardiomyocytes, as you know, they don't spontaneously beat, at least the mature and good ones. Uh, we have a mixture of cells so that we can support the current field with uh, automaticity. So that's where we are at. So I hope that answered the question. Thank you. Um, and from uh, Shan, I guess, um, how big is the micro tissue? Can it be frozen and thaw for use, ra ra for use rather than to co-culture each time? So could you freeze them and then use oh. them later, thaw them and use them later? And so we haven't tried it, but um, um, we haven't tried it yet. So I can't really, when, when you say freeze it, I'm assuming liquid nitrogen. Um, and uh, because they're a mixture of three cell types, I don't know how they would behave because of the connections that they make. Mm -hmm. um, it would be very tricky, but something that, um, so maybe I should answer this this way. Currently, there is technology available that you can cry, uh, cryo embryos, right? I'm sure if that is available to us, then yes, you should be able to do it, but um, we'll have to be evaluated. Short answer. <laughs> Thanks, Ravi. Um, and again, from Takasuna-san, uh, did you confirm that co-cultured cardiomyocytes are matured, not only functionally, but also gene expression or morphologically? Um, that are related to maturation. So did you choose any other, did you use any other techniques? We, to... we did actually. So I, I didn't put a lot of data here because I was not focusing on the cardio micro tissue, but we have done some EM and we are seeing some caviole, which is very exciting. Um, you should see some of that data soon when we launch uh, in a couple of months here. Uh, so that was one. The second is we have also looked at the um, the distance between the sarcomeres. Um, most IPSC cells have them in the range of 1.2 to 1.5, which is um, immature, of course. Um, we are seeing in the range of 1.7 to 1.8. So we are seeing some structural maturity. We are also looking into uh, uh, other aspects, um, metabolic maturity too. Um, all of that is being evaluated right now. So mm -hmm. I hope that helps. Thank you. Um, I have, uh, there are a couple of minutes left and I have two questions. If I, if sure. So you, um, at the last slide, you showed these um, strong or the, the, the higher contraction um, uh, force um, uh, traces after the fibroblasts are added to the, to the culture, um, if I understood correctly. Do you yes. assume that um, fibroblasts would then induce higher maturation um, because you, you add them there or you don't know that yet? So we don't know that yet. I think one of the things that we would like to do is to take these cultures long-term, right? We're looking at four days mainly because we, uh, when we try to do this long, well, we haven't, I should say, we haven't tried very hard on getting these long-term yet. We, we've had the system working for only a couple of, few weeks, as, mm -hmm. as uh, Elena, you are aware. Um, so we haven't done this. It's too early to say um, what are the fibroblasts doing. Some of the things that we're trying to do is, you know, uh, the, the 3D is easy, but you also need specialized uh, equipment um, uh, to do it. And we are trying to make it easy for our customers by if they can keep this current workflow and add more things to it, like co-culture and see if, if it 
benefits. So, so that was one. So that's first part. Second is maturation. Cardiac fibroblast, uh, because they released the factors and uh, also set down the matrix, we think that all of that is really helping the cells feel at home and in a more physiologically relevant environment, which also already the flex side is providing just, mm -hmm. you know, better. So I think that's where we are seeing some of these benefits, but it's too early to say if um, the fiber bloods are only sufficient. We, we are also trying to see if we want to put endothelial cells in there uh, in 2D uh, because our endothelial cells do form tubes. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how all of that, you know, falls into place. And very shortly, because you always have these really nice colorful pictures and you had really nice ones uh, from the spheroids that you've shown. Um, how homogeneous are they? So oh. if you, when you produce them, do you, do they, you know, show similar homogeneous levels? Yes, 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 mm -hmm. they do, they do. So one of the things that we, uh, we do is you combine all the three cell types in the right ratios, as I had shown uh, in into a dish. So it is one tube that has all the three cell types, and then you just pipe it from there into your well. So they're very homogeneous, and they continue to stay homogeneous uh, mm -hmm. over the 14-day period. And this is what uh, some of the complaints that we've got with the primary fibroblast because of the lot-to-lot -lot variability and also variability in the donor because you don't get the same donor. Um, the uh, We are seeing that with the IPSC derived fibroblast, you are seeing um, better control, um, better homogeneity, sorry. And then the second thing that we are also, you know, you can use this model for is to look at fibrosis. Uh, mm -hmm. With primary cells, because you have no control, over, I mean, they say it is apparently healthy, normal, but there are no healthy volunteers for okay. a fibroblast. So, you know, that, that is always that. Uh, needs to be taken into account when you're using these primary cells. And I think that's the void that these fibro, uh, iPSC derived fibroblasts are going to fill. Thank you very much, Ravi. Thank you for joining us and for your nice talk.